In today's market report, Asian shares were down on Friday after a sharp overnight sell-off in commodities, with investors seeking to reduce risk ahead of U.S. payrolls data later in the day. Opening after a three-day break, Japanese shares were down as much as 2 percent. Shares in Hong Kong and China also continued to lose ground as resources extended their slide following a plunge in commodities prices. The decline of resource stocks slowed later in the trading day, but a global benchmark for commodities prices was still heading for an 8 percent drop for the week. That's the biggest weekly fall in nearly three years. And some analysts are saying their prices could fall even more. Silver is heading for a weekly loss of nearly 30 percent. Up until last week, the commodity market was the best performing asset class this year, posting gains of more than 10 percent. Resources decline led to a brief wave of stop-loss selling in stocks and commodity currencies, such as the Australian dollar, which pushed currency favorites like the yen and the U.S. dollar higher. Oil saw a record $12 drop in the previous session, leading to a big jump in airline stocks today. Australia's Qantas and Hong Kong's Cathay Pacific added more than 3 percent. Singapore Airlines was more than 2 percent higher at midday. There's a lot of talk these days about the death of the American middle class and the rise of income inequality in this country. The New America Foundation has put together a, a pretty sobering report on this. I'm joined now by Sherelle Swinninger. He's the director of the Economic Growth Program at the Foundation. Uh, th thanks so much for being here. So, uh, once several statistics jumped out at me, one that wages and salaries have fallen from 60 percent of personal income in 1980 to 51 percent last year. So. What's making up the difference, or is there nothing making up the difference? Well, this is a combination of the fact that, that nominal wage growth has been fairly stagnant. Real wages have actually decreased in the last uh, few, few months and for most of 2010. What's making up the difference, at least in the short term, but this won't last for, for long, is government transfer payments, unemployment insurance, tax cuts, other earned income tax credits, other methods to, in essence, subsidize what has been the middle, the middle class stand, standard of, of living. But the two things that have been the primary coping mechanisms for the middle class over the last de decade, taking on more debt right. because of housing, rising ha housing prices, and increased... Um, Call it redistribution, if you will, but in government support through through a reduction of the tax cuts for the for the middle class and the low income workers, as well as for the uh, the top one to two percent, has sort of softened the blow, if you will, to the to the standard of living of the American middle class. Right, now that's I, going to come to. But me. I get the sense you don't think that the government can continue to replace the borrowing that a lot of Americans were doing in the first part of this decade. Well, it's coming, I think, as you see in, in Washington, too. There are political limits to that. There's political limits in terms of the current composition of Congress, but I think there's a larger political cultural limits to, to, the, to the U.S. Even the Great New Deal liberal um, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt said that Americans don't want to be dependent upon the government's dole. In your report, again, a lot of very sobering statistics. Middle-income jobs have been replaced by low-income jobs, which now make up 41 percent of total employment. You also have a, a chart in here about the, the number of people with bachelor's degrees or higher working in jobs where they don't need a college degree. But what defines a middle-income job from your perspective? Well, well a middle-income job is a job that, that allows um, family to enjoy a middle class standard of living but there are certain occupations how one measures that becomes a little bit more difficult and so there are jobs be cr being created in certain sectors that on the whole tend to have a much larger proportion of middle income and higher income jobs than other sectors of the economy and if you n notice that the types of jobs that have been growing over the last decade have been overwhelmingly in hospitality, health care, government. Uh, t teachers are not well paid in the U.S. and numbers of teachers have, have increased. Food preparation in restaurants, uh, things that is, is, is lumped under hospitality. So the restructuring of the, of the job market 
in part because of globalization, in part because we're shedding jobs in certain areas because of techno technology and productivity gains, has restructured the nature of, of jobs in America. It's slow, but it's increasingly extremely discernible in people's uh, wages and incomes and, and standards of living. If we don't reverse these trends, what's going to be the future of America? Are we be going to become a, a two-class society or a third-world country? Some people think we're, we're already on the road to becoming. Well, the, the, there's different ways of sort of um, in, uh, describing or envisioning. I, I, I worry that we're becoming sort of a, a, uh, a barbell society, if you will. A lot of money, wealth, and power at, at, at the top increasing sort of hollowness in the center, which provides, I think, the stability. And, and, and to my mind, this sort of heart and soul of a society. I, I mean, the establishment is important, but we have an establishment that perhaps doesn't really act as much as an establishment as it did before. But we have a ha increasingly hollowed out middle, and then we have too many people that are fear, in fear of falling falling down and on. on We're already a fall through the, through the cracks. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Sunday, May 8th, 2011, and I'm Darko. This is my website, www.ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. I have a poll up here, and you have four days left to vote if you'd like. It is, what is your take on Osama bin Laden? The first option is, he is a real grassroots terrorist who intends to do innocent people harm. Uh, it says he is a CIA operative who is used for government-sponsored terrorism, which is the most right now, 68%, and bin Laden has been dead for years at 31%, and bin Laden was just killed recently with 15%. So you can go there and check that out. Um, you can fill in this little feed burner with your address. Just uh, let me know who's uh, on my website and that. Um, you can follow me if you have a blogger account to the right here, or if you have a Facebook account, you can go down here and click on this follow button. All right, I'll uh, start with the economy, and um, the first up, uh, first article we have here is Chinese shares finish lower on weak regional markets. Chinese shares closed lower Friday, tracking weak regional markets and overnight losses on Wall Street. Then we have the dollar. The dollar's uh, higher after healthy U.S. job data. The dollar was trading higher this morning after better than expected U.S. unemployment or employment data boosted risk sentiment on Friday. Then we have U.S. will press China to hasten wants rise. U.S. officials will press China to allow the value of its currency they want rise more quickly amid signs that Beijing may be deciding to move it at a faster clip in part to fight inflation. Then the can Canadian dollar declines most since July on route and prices for crude oil. Uh, Canada's dollar fell the most since July against the greenback as crude oil, the nation's biggest export, tumbled on concerns the global recovery is stalling. Then PIMCO bets on weaker euro, stronger yuan, uh, Aussie, Singapore dollar. So most of the links, if not all, will be posted in the video's description. My YouTube channel is ddarko2012, so check that out. It says the euro fell the most in four months against the dollar after the European Central Bank president signaled he may not rise interest rates next month and concern grew that Greece's debt crisis is worsening. Then report on Greece sparks demand in U.S. Treasuries. A report that Greece may consider quitting the Eurozone Friday sparked a rally in safe haven treasuries. Then uh, the commodity markets, uh, basically they've gone down. And uh, we have Brent crude trading at $110 a barrel, and it was up $1.30. And we have natural gas futures uh, up about uh, two cents. And moving down here to agriculture, uh, we have corn uh, down $22, coffee uh, down 70 cents, and cocoa up $27. But uh, we move down here to precious metals, and when copper is trading at $399. It was up $1.85. And gold is now at $1,494, so it's below the $1,500 mark, and it was up $3 an ounce. Silver, below the $40 mark now, $35.68, and it was up $0.39. Cents. So it says commodities uh, drop curbs risk appetite. U.S. stock investors heading to this week with added worries about sustainability of the recent rally and a desire to reduce risk, as shown by the stampede out of commodities on Thursday. Then U.S. gas prices hit $4 
$11 a gallon, but may retreat. The average price for gasoline in the U.S. rose $11.98 in the past two weeks. But it says here, last week's fall in crude oil prices may signal lower costs to come, an industry and analysis said. Okay, so the next up we have is on oil still. Oil prices drop after a short, short recovery. Sorry, Oil prices have retreated again in the New York exchange uh, on demand worries after a slight rebound on a positive U.S. jobs outlook. All right, and uh, oil prices will top highs after correction, says Goldman. Goldman Sachs, which in April predicted this week's major correction in oil prices, said on Friday oil could surpass recent highs by 2012 due to supply tightness. And uh, UK at risk as imports of fuel rise. The UK is becoming increasingly dependent on potentially insecure imports of diesel and aviation fuel, according to a government commission report. Gas prices is expected to drop 50 cents by summer. And um, you can go in there and check that out. Uh, sounds like good news. Petrol blockade to halt Britain. It says petrol pumps across the UK will start running out of fuel tomorrow, according to a protest group plotting to bring the country to a standstill. So the blockade will begin today at the uh, Stanlow Oil Refinery in uh, Ellesmere Port, uh, Cheshire, which supplies one in six uh, garage four coats worth fuel. Moving on here, climate shifts hit uh, global wheat yields. It says shifts in climate over the past three decades have been linked to a 5.5% decline in global wheat production, is has suggested. Okay, and then we have next rising costs of plastic. Borrowers are being urged to review their credit card debt after figures this week revealed lenders have increased interest rates to a 13 year high despite the base rate being on hold for 26 months. At its all-time low of 0.5%. And Twister's pummel poultry industry. And uh, we have here a poultry breeder. Uh, his chicken houses lies in ruins. And it says thousands of birds are dead. Hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equipment has been lost. And we have retail sales probably climbed in April. Restaurants lift prices as inflation hawks see fed behind curve. Dining out will cost more this year as U.S. restaurants take advantage of the nearly two-year-long expansion to boost prices on food and drinks. It says here food inflation uh, still a worry despite commodities route. And Hillary Clinton here is uh, giving a warning. She raises alarm on rising food prices. Then we have taxpayers bank bonus. Taxpayers should make a $3.4 billion profit from bailing out the banking sector. Hmm, wonder how that works. Then we have debt ceiling. Uh, Treasury will hit, or yeah, Treasury will hit legal limit when it borrows $13 billion more. And then look at this. Fannie Mae requests additional $8.5 billion in government aid. Then we have student protests against banks in Rome. Then unemployment benefits application filings reach eight-month peak. And then moving on here, we have from the National Journal, U.S. adds 244 jobs in April, but unemployment rises. Then we have pay fear for the poor. Uh, the pay of top earners is spiraling, spiraling out of control, putting Britain on course for levels of inequality not seen since the Victorian England, according to the High Pay Commission. Welfare gap still stark. Australia may be a lucky country, but education and a good job comes that much easier if your family is well off, a new report suggests. Then we have growing credit card debt linked to recent rate rises, says banking boss. Then the Bank of England is uh, reported as saying forced to, they're forced to cut UK growth forecast yet again, the downgrade Britain's economic growth forecast this week. And then the Treasury's uh, guy there do grads work for the government. Why? Uh, public sector pay is soaring out of control in England. It says here, a typical CEO made $9 million last year, exceeding pre-recession levels. Then from Der Spiegel, Greece considers exit from Eurozone. Then Greek uh, Prime Minister denies to leave Eurozone. Then Obama administration floats draft plan to tax cars by the mile. Then we have Exxon makes $30 billion, so the GOP votes unanimously to give them tax breaks. And then we have up next, Europe's central bank slows pace of rate hikes. Then Sony apologizes, offers $1 million insurance after hacking. Then we have Chinese philanthropists arrested for illegally raising uh, funds. And then lastly, TV celebrity uh, Tanya Zeta, peace for the children charity, forced into suspension after they found out it wasn't going uh, to the people. It says charity shut down, uh, and it says here less than a quarter of income to charity. Uh, you can join me in part two of this news bulletin. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.